Hi everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to deploy a CloudGuard uh, gateway. It's a standalone uh, CloudGuard gateway that has a management and gateway on the same instance, on the same machine, uh, on AWS uh, Cloud. And this is the topology that uh, we are going to build and we have uh, cloud formation templates. And this template, basically, what he's doing is going to create uh, the VPC. He's also going to create uh, the public subnet and the private subnet. Uh, it will create also the IGW and he's going to attach it to the public uh, subnet and create uh, two uh, route tables, one for the public subnet and another route to the private subnet. And then he's going to deploy the standalone uh, CloudGuard uh, uh, gateway. Cloud, uh, gateway, it's a standalone, so it means that it's uh, as a management and gateway on the same uh, machine as I mentioned before. Okay, so before we can, uh, before we will start, uh, what uh, before you uh, running the template, what you will need to do is subscribe on the marketplace for this uh, uh, for this template. So I will uh, switch to the AWS console and search for a subscription, and you will find the AWS marketplace subscriptions. Go. And you can see that uh, I'm subscribed to a few uh, solutions and I'm already subscribed to the CloudGuard Network Security all-in-one. So what you will need to do is go to Discover Products. Because if you will start uh, running the template without uh, subscribe, subscribing uh, to this uh, solution, the template uh, deployment uh, will fail. So uh, this is why you need to do it before. And so uh, search for a checkpoint and you will find the template CloudGuard Network Security all-in-one. And then uh, you will need to uh, uh, continue and subscribe, click subscribe, accept the terms. And now uh, we are ready to deploy the template. Before we do that, I want to show you my VPC. Uh, I have uh, two VPC that uh, I've created, but uh, we are not going to use them, so you can safely ignore them. And to find all the checkpoint templates and the template that uh, we are going to use, uh, search for uh, AWS Cloud 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 and here, here you see it, AWS Cloud Formation uh, templates from Checkpoint. And the one that uh, we need is this one, Standalone Deployment, Security Management Server and Security Gateway. So we will click on it. And you see that uh, you have uh, two options. Uh, if you already have a VPC and subnet, you can deploy it uh, to the existing VPC or uh, create a new VPC and deploy the standalone uh, uh, machine into it. So we are going to create uh, uh, with the template the VPC and the subnet as uh, I've just uh, shown you here. Uh, the template is going to create all of this uh, environment. So. I will click uh, create a new VPC and deploy a standalone. I will launch the stack. You can give the stack any name that you want. You can leave it uh, as is, checkpoint uh, standalone. We will uh, choose the availability zone. Uh, this, those are the default uh, CIDRs. This is the CDR. You feel uh, free to change it if you want to use the uh, 192 or another private IP addresses. And this is what is going to assign for the public subnet and for the private uh, subnet. Uh, the name that is going to appear on uh, EC2 instances list is checkpoint instance. Uh, 
the default uh, instance type is uh, C C5 uh, extra large. Uh, you can choose a bigger or a smaller one. Uh, the key name, it's important, you have to uh, create a, a key pair, uh, it's under, if you don't know where it is, uh, it's under the EC2 console, so I'll, I already have one. We want to allocate an elastic uh, IP address, a public IP address, that it was uh, going, that is going to be dedicated for this instance. Uh, we want to be able to connect it uh, via the console, so we we'll switch uh, to true, and the uh, version of the standalone that we want is R8110, pay as you go. We we'll need to provide the password the hash, so in order to generate a password hash, this is the password that uh, we are going to use in order to connect to the smart console. So I'm going to, co to copy the command from here, and you can generate the command in any uh, Linux uh, machine. So I will connect to one of my machines. the command and the password that I, I want to hash uh, it's uh, cpwins uh, choose of course uh, your own password and this is what you need to copy this is the hash of the password this is what you need to copy and paste in the template uh, the standalone host name this is the name that uh, is going to, uh, the object is going to get on the smart console, so I will call it uh, CT stand along AWS. And the administrator uh, access, uh, I want to allow it from everywhere. Now we'll accept the terms and we will create uh, the stack. This is going to take like uh, uh, 15 minutes, something like that. This is what is going to to take for the uh, for the instance to be ready. So I will uh, stop the recording for now. I will pause the recording and uh, I will get back to you in a few moments. Okay, so 15 minutes uh, has uh, passed. So let's uh, see, uh, as we can see that uh, the CloudFormation template uh, was finished. And uh, let's uh, check the EC2 instance. Let's see that he is there. So this is the checkpoint instance that uh, has been deployed. And as you can see, as has uh, two private IP addresses. One is uh, connected to ETH0, to the public IP, and another one connected to ETH1, which is the uh, private uh, uh, subnet. And let's also, let's uh, also take a look on the routing tables. So we'll go to VPC. Route tables. So this is the VPC that has been created by the template, a checkpoint standalone VPC. And we see that uh, we have uh, three uh, route tables. This is uh, the main route table, and another two for one for the public subnet. This one is not in use, okay? The main route table is not in use. We have uh, two uh, route tables that are in use, the public subnet route table and the internal routing. This is the associated with the internal, internal one. 
as you can see here on if we are uh, clicking on the internal routing table on the subnet association we see that is associated with the private subnet and this one the public is associated with the uh, public subnet okay if we will uh, take a look on the topology with the public subnet the private subnet we have a routing table that is associated with the private subnet and another routing table that is associated with the public uh, with the public uh, subnet on the public subnet uh, we have a route a default route to the igw this is the AWS Internet Gateway. And on the internal uh, route table, we have a route, a default route, the point on this ENI. This ENI belongs to the checkpoint. This is uh, the ETH1. It's point on ETH1. So all the clients that uh, will be deployed over here, the instances, are going to route the traffic uh, to anywhere, to the internet 000, is going to route it to ETH1. So if we will uh, uh, click on the ENI, you will see that this ENI is associated with the checkpoint uh, machine. ETH1. Okay, this is what I was looking for. ETH1, which is this one, ETH1. Okay, so uh, now what I want to do, I want to uh, deploy uh, a web server over here that uh, I will be able to access it from the internet, the web server, I will be able to access it, I will open access uh, on HTTPS and uh, SSH port and I want to, and it will go pass through the uh, Cloud Guard Gateway and also outgoing traffic from the instance, so let's put here a, an instance, this is the instance that I'm going to deploy here and also outgoing traffic is going to route through the gateway once he wants to uh, go to the internet. Okay, so let's uh, first uh, deploy uh, the instance on the private uh, subnet. And I will go to uh, EC2. Instances and I will deploy an NGNX uh, instance from uh, the marketplace. It's coming uh, with a built-in uh, web server. So it uh, will save me some time. Okay, let's, uh, take, uh, let's take this one. This one, the free tier. Uh, I'm going to deploy this instance to the checkpoint VPC, the, the one that uh, we've created with the template, and I'm going to uh, put it on the private subnet. But I want that uh, it will have a public IP address. We will route the public IP address to the checkpoint gateway. So. Uh, so there will not there, there is not going to be a direct access from the internet to this instance okay but still we want him to be available available uh, to the internet with a public ip 
back to the gateway, so we are going to attach him to assign him a public IP. Okay. Click next. A tag. We can give him a name. Uh, this is my uh, web server checkpoint demo. This is going to be the instance name. Uh, we will. Uh, uh, create a, a new security group, let's call it uh, allow all. We want to allow all the traffic, so we are going to control anyway the traffic to, to the checkpoint policy, so we don't uh, need to control, to do double control. Uh, we are going to manage all the policy in the checkpoint, so we are going to allow all traffic. And we will launch uh, the instance. So we have here the instance. We uh, wait for him to be ready. In the meanwhile, let's uh, connect. Uh, let's connect to the checkpoint uh, instance. So this is his public IP address, and download the smart console. The smart console is the GUI that, uh, uh, that uh, through this GUI we are connecting to the checkpoint management and uh, managing the object, the policy, and so on. So we will connect uh, to it over a. Yes, and the default uh, user is admin, and the password is the password that we use to the hashing password that uh, we used uh, on the, once we uh, run the CloudFormation template. So admin, and now we use the password that I was hashed. And I will go to a download smart console here at the at the bottom. So download smart console and run the setup. I already have a smart console, so I'm going to open the smart console from here. We deployed R8110, so I will open the smart console. Elastic IP of the uh, of the checkpoint machine and the password the same uh, hash password. And remember, after you deploy, you have to wait at least fifteen minutes for uh, the for the management to be up and running. So be patient. Wonderful. So uh, we see that uh, we have the standalone, and this is the name that uh, we put on the template. You see CP standalone AWS. This is the name that I gave, the host name that I gave on the template. And now the first thing that uh, we will need to do is activate uh, uh, IDA. So for that, we need to create a IDA is identity awareness. We, this is a blade that is running on top of the gateway. So the first thing that we need to do in order to configure the IDA is to create a dummy object. So I'm going to new host and I will call it a local host. And the IP address is 127.0.0.1. Uh, then I'm going to click on the machine, double click on it, or you can right click and edit. And I will activate the identity awareness blade. And we will see that the wizard will pop up, but we are not going to configure it uh, through the wizard, so we can safely 
uh, cancel it, close it. As you can see, it's still uh, checked. And then we are going to the identity of a stub over here. And we are going to uh, enable the identity web API. I will go to the setting. I will choose on the client access permission to uh, to all the interface. The portal is going to be accessible to all <coughs> to all interfaces. And the authorized clients is the local host that I've just created. This is the local host. And this is it. I click OK. And OK. And publish uh, the changes. I click publish. So publish the changes is like uh, saving the changes to the management, to the setting. So publish is like saving. Okay, so you need to do it to commit the changes to the checkpoint management machine. I click uh, publish. So now we are uh, ready to uh, uh, create a policy. We'll go to the security policy. Okay, and we have an empty security policy. So, basically, uh, when uh, you are working uh, on a cloud environment, uh, you are not going to create the object over here to define them manually. Why? Because the cloud object instances in the cloud, uh, the IP of the instances are changing uh, uh, all the time. Okay, so what we have, we have a cloud connector. So we go to new, more, data center, cloud, data center, and here we can uh, create a connector to a private cloud infrastructure and also public cloud uh, infrastructure. Among of them, we have the AWS. So we'll click on, uh, we, we deployed it on AWS, so we click on the AWS. Uh, we will give the connector, the controller, a name, AWS California. Okay, and we can connect to the to our tenants to grab all the instances and the IP addresses uh, via a few methods. So we can do user authentication with an access key uh, and a secret. Uh, or we can do a role authentication. In our case, uh, the checkpoint management, the instance, the standalone, is deployed into AWS, so we can use role authentication. We can also use uh, user authentication, uh, but since it's uh, deployed on uh, AWS, I will use role authentication. So uh, what we will need to do is to create the policy and a role and then attach uh, to the checkpoint uh, management machine instance on AWS uh, the role that uh, we've created. We will also need to uh, set the region. We are working on AWS California. You can see over here we are using uh, North uh, California. And since uh, there is no uh, role that uh, is attached uh, to the AWS uh, instance, if we try to test the connection, it's going to fail. So let's uh, configure a policy, a role, and attach it to the, to the checkpoint instance. If you will take a look on the instance right now on the security, you will see that I don't have any IAM role that is attached to this instance. So let's uh, create a role, uh, AMI, sorry, IAM. I'm going to create a policy, create new policy, and I'm going to paste the JSON file, so you just need a read only to EC2 instances, and this is the policy that uh, you need. So you can see that uh, I'm aligned to, uh, to access 
all the resources and this is the actions okay describe describe those are uh, basically uh, read only I will share it uh, in the post uh, itself uh, this policy so you will be able to copy paste it uh, so let's move on I will give it a name uh, control policy create a policy so we have the policy now let's go to walls I will create a new wall This is for a AWS service. And this is a, a, a this is a use case a EC2 access, and I'm going to attach the policy that uh, we've just created controller. A controller policy. To this role controller this is the name of the role so we have a role now controller and now let's switch uh, back to the EC2 instances and we will attach the checkpoint this new role so we we'll click on it right click security modify AM role and I will touch the controller click save and it's going to take a few moments before we will be able to check it so let's switch again to the smart console and click uh, test connection and now it's uh, connected okay click OK and publish what I also want to show you is how to before we start configure the policy I will show you how to work with instances and also with instances tag so I will switch back to the console and uh, this is the server that uh, we've built so let's say that uh, you have uh, a lot of server from uh, the same type okay and you want to give uh, all of those server the same uh, uh, traffic uh, access in and out or whatever you want so uh, let's uh, give him a, a tag and I will call him manage tags let's add a tag so I will uh, add a type Let's uh, type and let's say that I will call him a, a production pod. This is the tag value type pod. Okay. And I will switch back to the smart console. And now, what we want to do, uh, we want to create a, a tool. So the first one will be access from the internet, okay, so from any, from any to an instance, and the instance we are going to grab uh, the instance from the data center object, okay, AWS California from the controller, so we can uh, grab a specific instance or we can grab a tag, so let's in this case, let's grab a specific uh, instance, so I will go to a uh, region VPC and this is under the so this is the VPC and this is the instance uh, that we want to uh, allow access to okay web server checkpoint so this is the one so if the IP address uh, of this instance uh, change over time I don't care because it's going to get the updates uh, to the management and from the management it's going to propagate to the uh, gateway to enforce the policy so I don't uh, care if those uh, uh, if the IP address of the instances are changing because everything uh, over here is uh, uh, propagated dynamically uh, for enforcement 
So this is one thing that uh, we need to do. And we want to allow access to it uh, over uh, port uh, HTTPS. And also over uh, SSH. And the action will be accept and we want to uh, log the traffic. Now, uh, we will also want that uh, this instance or all the instances with the same tag, let's uh, create a rule that uh, will allow all the instances with the same tag. From type uh, pod, all the instances that have uh, the uh, type uh, pod will be able to ping uh, Google DNS. So, you know what, uh, go anywhere. Go anywhere on any service. We we'll accept the traffic. We are going to log the traffic. For the drop cleanup rule, we also want to log the traffic. Okay, so access from anywhere to this uh, specific instance to the my web instance over HTTPS and SSH, and from all the instances that has the specific ta uh, tag type pod, we will be able to access anywhere. So we are going to publish the changes. And install policy. wait for the policy to be installed to see that we don't have uh, errors and the policy was installed successfully perfect so let's uh, switch back uh, to the diagram so we have a routing table that uh, will uh, associate with private subnets so all the traffic from these instances will go to the cloud guard and from the cloud guard we have here a public uh, a route table that uh, saying that all the traffic that goes to the internet going to the IGW, to the internet gateway, and from there to the internet. But what about the return traffic? So traffic that is coming from the internet. So this instance, this instance, let's take a look on it. This is the instance. As you can see, he has a private IP. This is private IP. And he has a public IP. This is his public IP. Okay? And the public IP basically advertise on uh, the internet gateway and the internet gateway on our setting will try to pass the traffic directly to uh, the instance without going through the cloud guard. this is what normally happens okay but we want that the traffic uh, for this public IP of the instance over here will go uh, through the cloud guard okay and how do we do that we create another uh, route table. We will associate the, in, the internet gateway with this routing table. And we will say that uh, in order to access the private subnet, and the private subnet IP, let's uh, take a look on the private subnet IP, VPC. Subnet. And we are talking about uh, uh, those subnets. So we are talking about the private uh, subnets over here. And those are the IP addresses. I can copy paste it over there. So those are the private uh, IP addresses. And we will want to route uh, the traffic to ETH0. Uh, so all the traffic that is going to this subnet will go through ETH0. So let's find out what is the ENI of ETH0. So we can go to a
to the VPC to sorry to EC2. If we will click on the checkpoint instance on the networking and we see that ETH1 ETH0 is the public IP is B9F okay B9F so let's create a new routing uh, table so on the route tables we're going to create a route table and let's call it the uh, IGW we associate uh, with the VPC of the uh, cloud guard we create uh, uh, the route table we don't associate any subnet with it. What we need to associate with it is the edge, is the IGW. So we will edit it and add the internet gateway to it. And we are going to create a route. So edit route. And we are going to add the route, this one, of the private network. Okay, and we are going to uh, send it to the ENI network interface, and this is the uh, checkpoint external one. Okay, B nine F. Okay, the external one, and we can save the changes. So basically, now if we will go to a uh, uh, locks and monitor let's uh, check uh, what is the IP of the web server so this is the private IP we will copy it and we want a uh, to see traffic to this uh, uh, instance. On the first time, it's take uh, like a few moments to load all the logs. So we are uh, talking about the uh, destination. So I will add filter with uh, this destination. Okay, and now I will try to SSH uh, to the public IP from the internet to the public IP of the instance which is this IP okay so let's say uh, try to SSH this guy access let's see if we see the log on the check on side so let's uh, refresh it so we see the SSH that is passing through the checkpoint okay and now let's uh, try to ping from this instance to the internet so now the source is going to be this instance Destination is going to be 888. So it doesn't find anything. Let's say uh, click here, it will auto refresh the logs, and I will ping 888. Let's check the checkpoint again. And we see uh, the log. Okay, so also traffic to the internet is going to the checkpoint. Awesome. So uh, now you see how uh, simple it is uh, to deploy a checkpoint uh, standalone uh, machine into AWS. It's take about uh, 20 minutes to configure it all. If you have any questions, don't hesitate and uh, post a reply on this post and we will answer to you ASAP. 
Thank you very much and bye-bye.